Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman. Right now, we got markets floating pretty close to calm. We got the S&P's flat, 29.95. Nasdaq negative by 14, trading at 8,090. Dow Jones positive by 16, trading 26,084. Let's go over to our man Teddy Kegstat, as we do every Wednesday at 10:40 past the hour. Ted, you can check out Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlocked.com. That's forex-trading-unlocked.com. And man, oh man, we always got something good going on in the forex market. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, guys. Morning, so, Teddy. So, Teddy, quite a day yesterday, of course, with the Brexit. I was sitting here on the Bloomberg terminal watching the votes come down. The first one got approved. By about 20 votes on the MP, the second one got denied by about 20 points, and you saw that pound fall off. You saw the euro fall off, fall off a little bit of dollar action. Um, what, what, what's kind of your take on those markets and where we go from here? Maybe we can start off right there. Okay, well, obviously, we have a timeline, <clears throat> excuse me, of uh, Halloween, October 31st for Brexit. Uh, so, for sure, that's something we're looking at, keying off the information. Uh, we have the ECB, which has uh, some big numbers coming out tomorrow. They have the PMI for the EU, for Germany, and France all coming out tomorrow. So, these are going to be numbers they're going to be watching. So, that is, might be a little stir with the euro, US dollar tomorrow. But as a whole, I think we're going to start to see them kind of go sideways into uh, next uh, Thursday as we have these votes on, on you know, unleashed and we see really where we're going to go with as far as direction. Um, but one thing you guys might want to take a look at is um, besides Brexit ending on October 31st, we also have a monthly signal that may be triggered in the dollar index. Uh, and is, this could be the beginning of a new uh, direction for the dollar index for not just the next couple of months, but maybe actually for the next couple of years. So uh, for October, we have a bearish engulfing line forming. So if we settle right now, if the dollar, in, if, if today or tomorrow, the uh, index was to settle where it's at, we would have a sell signal on a monthly basis. Um, also, should this signal occur next Thursday, that might be the uh, second shoulder in a head and shoulders formation on a multi-year formation for the dollar index. Um, and if these two things coincide and are correct, then we probably see um, pressure on the U.S. dollar, not just for the rest of the fourth quarter, but probably for the next two to three years, literally. And it's pretty cool, Teddy. We've been talking about it. And um, of course, you know, Brexit tying into things, the pound and the euro getting pulled down so dramatically as we've had so much uncertainty over there and really quite a pop that we've seen over, you know, the last few weeks with Boris, as in maybe the hard Brexit taken off of things. You've seen the dollar lose a little bit of the steam it's had since then. Um, so maybe that sets the trend. But it's been quite a move that you've been talking about, man, as we've come into that that uh, that vote and kind of that October 31st deadline so far. Um, jump Sorry to interrupt you uh, real quick. The uh, dollar index, as it's been pounding these lows, I mean, the last couple of days it's come back. Ironically, so has the pound. The pound has come off its highs. The euro has come off its highs. So there's a this little, we have a harmonic that started on October 1st. And I think this is going to continue into October 31st, even with the Brexit going on. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting stuff, man. I sat here for the whole hour from about 2 p.m. Eastern time yesterday to about 2.30 it took for those votes to come down. And um, not to say it was all but expected, but, man, it's just history repeats. They think that they might get it, right? The pound is up there. And uh, before you know it, it falls off that cliff at 2.30 when the second vote doesn't pass and, and the volatility kind of continues. Sure, sure. And I think that yesterday's votes that you're talking about they're, they're totally indicative of what we've been seeing for not just the past few months, but for the past couple of years. Um, but it was a positive sign that Boris Johnson did get the one vote. Um, it's a step in the right direction, and I think it's probably the first positive signal for him that we've seen actually in a couple of months. Yeah, I mean, we're and dealing with it. The second vote was a little uh, closer, wasn't it? Yes. Right been dealing with so, it for almost three and a half years and for the first time they actually got a vote to um to go forward with brexit now they they pushed the timeline back um which is why you saw that kind of delay but pretty remarkable you know you had all those theresa may defeats and then they finally mm -hmm. get one get one forward so three and a half years a little bit of progress inch by inch they get there but that's where we stand um, and they say things take a long time in the u.s <laughs> 
Oh, right. And, you know, the, the lead up to that, before we jump to some of the other cards, the lead up to that was, you know, the fast track, right? Oh, oh man, how are you going to do this with only three days of negotiations? Um, and I, I kind of agree with that sentiment. You can understand that sentiment for everything on the table, but you got to keep in mind they've had three and a half years to do that yeah. action. So um, frustration everywhere. How about the yen, um, Teddy? I know we're always looking at that. We get the yen trading about 108.57 right now. Uh, what are you looking at for the yen? Now, the yen is the one currency, it's kind of funny how uh, where the dollar has been weak and the other uh, major currencies have been strong, the U.S. dollar yen actually has been the opposite. So while the dollar's been under pressure, the yen made newer highs recently just last week. Now, it has been consolidating over the past couple sessions, and I think that that's because we have so much geopolitical news that's coming into play. So, and to the upside, it's it's a it's just a grind like you notice if you take a look at the high that we made a couple sessions back sure that took out the last swing high by only a little bit you're yes. talking about a half a buck move you're not there's not much room to the upside now i'm still bullish overall especially because i'm bearish the uh the dollar index right now okay and if if that if if especially as we trade in the next thursday if the dollar index falls under pressure again then I think you're going to see the yen actually continue to make new highs. But I don't think you're going to see any exacerbated rally. I think you're just going to see it just kind of tick through, make new highs, and be a grind where I think your your weak shorts are going to get squeezed, and I think your weak longs are going to get chopped up. I think you just kind of got to ride it and just hang on. Yeah, pretty remarkable, man. When you look at that, just going back to kind of the beginning of August, and man, we had so much turmoil, whether you look, that was kind of where our, our rates went, you know, gangbusters as well. But you had the yen basically almost right where we're at, right? You trade down to almost 105, and now right like that, we're right back almost at 109. Uh, right. The Swiss franc, Teddy, I know we talk about that a lot. Um, yes. Always taking a look, you know, you're talking about parity and so forth. What are you looking at for that Swiss franc, the CHF? Um Right now, I think for the U.S. dollar Swiss, I like the uh, the little bounce that we have over the past couple sessions. I think that we'll probably see that rally continue maybe over the next day or so into the end of the week. But I'm looking, if, especially if the dollar index starts to go lower, I think you're going to see the Swiss franc actually get down to that like 97.30 area, 97.5 area. Okay. Yeah. And we're trading, what are we, 99.08 right now on that Swiss franc. Right. Nice. Right. We had a rejection at parity. I think right now you have to look at the short term trend where, you know, we're it's it's indicating a lower move lows. I mean, you make a lower move high, lower move low, lower. You know, I mean, you just have to go with the following, you know, with the trend. Yeah, that's the trend is your so, friend, as they say. It doesn't come from nowhere. Right. For sure. Because right. they don't care about Brexit and the EU stuff like yeah. that. They're yeah. Different. Yeah. You know? That reliable Swiss franc for sure. Right. Well, I like it. I think as a trader, as, a, as if you want to avoid the news right now, trade the, trade the Swiss and key off the dollar index. I think the yen is going to be a tight trade. The euro and the pound, they're, they're, they're kind of, you know, the euro gains strength, but at 108.05, or the, um, you know, the, the buck 08 area, like eight half. But it's, Teddy, we might have to move this to two segments going forward, man. We got so much happening in the Forex market. That was a quick nine exactly. minutes. Folks, you saw the charts we had up there. Check them out. Teddy, every day, forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy, we appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you next week. Take care. Take care, man.